your source for everything paranormal. Parapex. Throughout the ages, history has been altered by word of mouth and the misrepresentation of those who might not have been present when some of the world's most significant events took place. Channelers Barry and Connie Strom bring through the spirits of those who actually witnessed or took part in these historical events and lets them tell their stories in their own words. Welcome to Channeling History, and now, here are your hosts, Barry and Connie Strom. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Channeling History. By now, I hope you know that we're the only show where we speak to the souls that made things happen, and we're brought to you every Sunday on the Para-X Radio Network. I'm Barry Strom, your host, and I will be doing the channeling tonight. I'm Connie Strom, your co-host, and I will be asking the questions of our spirit guest this evening. If you missed our show last week, we channeled Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. He gave us a lot of information, not only about his trip to the moon, but about the ongoing alien disclosure. This was very important channeling. Extraterrestrial disclosure is coming, and the information he spoke of will help prepare you for the event. Take your fear away. We never know in advance what our spirits are going to say, so it's always prudent to include a bit of a disclaimer. The opinions and statements voiced on our show are the channeled words of the spirits and do not necessarily reflect our opinions, those of the Parax Network, or of our sponsors. On our show tonight, we're going to channel the famous Indian pacifist Mahatma Gandhi. He was assassinated in 1948 at the age of 78, and was the main reason the country of India gained its independence from Great Britain. You will find that he is an amazing soul and will have a very interesting session with us this evening. All of our so shows are available on our YouTube channel, and it's in my name, Barry Strome. Or if you would like to download them, go to Podomatic.com and just search Channeling History. We've started a new podcast named A Weekly Message from Jesus, in which we bring a message of faith and inspiration to help guide us through the current times. We post those new messages from our Lord on Wednesdays on the YouTube channel. And I'd like to thank all of you that take the time to listen to our show and even join us in the chat room. Your questions are always appreciated, so please tell your friends about us so we can continue to grow our audience. Before we channel, we always say a prayer of protection. When we began spirit communication this prayer was given to us by the spirit guides and we've been using it before we ever open the channel and tonight will be no exception so connie now say the prayer and we'll begin to channel with mahatma gandhi god please grant us your wisdom and protection grant us the knowledge that we can handle and keep us safe from all things that will harm us keep the messages positive and pure love Keep us safe from our egos. We ask these things in the light of the seen, the unseen, and the honesty of God. Okay, Connie, I've really been looking forward to this tonight. We have channeled with Mr. Gandhi before, and I understand just how great a guest he is. So why don't we get started, and you can begin asking him some questions. Okay, Gandhi, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, would you like to begin with a message? Yes, I would. Tonight, I would like to thank you for asking me to come forward and to speak to you on the radio. It has been many years since I've had the opportunity to talk with many people, and tonight I am really looking forward to this. So, I hope that my messages will be met with your approval. I hope that you will pay attention to some of my words. Many of you think that my life as a pacifist, does not apply to you today, but I think you will find out that when you listen closely, many of my words are as good now as they were when I lived. So anyway, Connie, I know that you have many questions for me, so would you like to begin with some direct questions? I definitely would. Thank you. Uh, you were assassinated in 1948, and many people are not aware of who you were or your accomplishments. Will you tell us about your life and accomplishments, please? I would like to do that. Because, yes, I do know that now many people do not know who I am. 
It has been almost a hundred years since the time of my death. I was born in India just before 1870 and my parents were of a moderate caste. I was given a decent education but in those days the, the people of Great Britain ruled India and had complete control over us. There were what there were many groups of people in India that were extremely poor. It was a time of the caste system and many people were not allowed to advance. I went to England and studied to become an attorney, but that did not work out well. I returned, I went to South Africa to practice law and realized just how badly the forces of Great Britain treated people of color. I tried to help those people in South Africa and then after about 20 years I returned to India and tried to help the lives of the people there. Great Britain had great control over the people and could basically do whatever they wanted. I went and tried to discuss changes in lifestyle with those that were in charge, but I was greatly ignored. Finally, the British changed laws and made it even worse for the people of color. I started to lead the people and to teach them how to show what they wanted, but not to use violence. It took many, many years for us to convince the British that we should be free in India. I worked many, many years at trying to save people and to have them have better lives in my home country. You will see that the world during my lifetime understood just how much they just how much I cared about my people. The British would throw me in jail for what I was doing, but eventually they would let me out and more and more people would follow. The newspapers started to write about what I was doing and world pressure on the British finally resulted in the Indian people becoming their own country. I was during my lifetime, oh, given many awards, I had a Nobel Peace Prize, among other things, but I tried to live a very simple life. All I wanted to do was to help my people, and I was successful. So I hope that short history was some help for you. I believe it was, and we have a question from one of our listeners already. Uh, like you to remark on how your political party is being guided since your death. There are many changes since my death. There are times that the government of India does not do what I would prefer them to do. I wish that they would make peace with Pakistan and I wish that they would do more to protect the environment. But they are independent, and they are making their own decisions. It is their free will to run the country. I am long gone, but I still think that my influence works in certain ways. I hope so. Uh, are you a member of the soul family of God, Gandhi? I have served God in many ways, in many, many lifetimes, before I walked the earth as Gandhi. I am very close to him when I am on this side and I try to help him from here. I know that he is asking me soon to come back and return because their times are very troubled and I will do that when he wants. But there are souls that are very close to him and I am happy to say that I have earned a place in that group. Yes. Uh, would you explain to our listeners what it means to be a member of the soul family of God? It has taken millions of years for the souls of a human to advance to the point that they can be 
close to God by being accepted in the seventh realm, which is the highest. These souls are very special. They are souls that have been sent back to do God's work, not only on this planet, but on many other planets. It is a great honor to be able to be sent back to try to do missions for God. I know that many people do not even believe in him, but I can assure you that he does at least. He lives, and he has incredible powers. I know that I will be sent back, and I am happy to do so, just as you of Connie have been sent back to serve him, and we are pleased that you are doing as much as you can to spread his words. Okay. Uh, did you live any lives on earth serving God before your lifetime as Gandhi? Yes. I served him many times on earth. I was present when he walked the earth. He trusted me to come back to try to assist Peter in serving him and spreading the words that he was going to speak. I served him earlier. I was with Moses. I helped Moses bring the Israelites to the land that you now refer to as Israel. I have done much for him, and I certainly hope that he will choose me to do much more. Okay, were you sent back to assist Jesus when he walked the earth? Yes. When Jesus returned, he chose many of us from his soul family to come with him that he could trust. Everything in his life was replanned, and we knew what he wanted us to do. We did the best we could. There were those that were followers. There were many that are not talked about in the Gospels today. But they did what they were sent back to do. The words that Jesus spoke were never written down. But what were remembered has changed the lives of millions and millions of people in the last 2,000 years. I hope that your listeners understand just how important it was that he returned at the time that he did. Yeah. Could you elaborate on that prior life and other things that happened to you? During that lifetime, the Romans were very much in control of what you now refer to as the Middle East. They had their gods, and they had many of them. It was a time that our Lord wanted to return, and he wanted them to understand that there was a path that was not spoken by the Romans. He spoke of a life of love and happiness. And if you lived that life, you would follow him to heaven. It was a very difficult time. Many people thought we were all crazy. We had trouble. We had many times that our lives were in danger. I became very close to several of those closest to Jesus. I helped Peter with his life, and I helped him spread the words after our Lord was crucified. I was also killed by the Romans. They did not appreciate that we were speaking of a life that did not speak of their gods. So it was a difficult time. Okay. Did you reincarnate between that life and the one as Gandhi? Yes. I returned during the early Middle Ages, to become a member of the church. God was seeing that the church was not following his wishes, but was attempting to give power and strength to those that were leading the church. I returned as a bishop, and I did not do well. I tried to speak more of following God then of following the church, and I was pretty much ignored. It was also a difficult lifetime, and 
I was only about 30 years old when I was poisoned in that life because they no longer wanted me to speak. Hmm. Terrible. Um, could you describe your childhood as Gandhi? I was never a very good student in school, and I was very bashful in my childhood. I was not anything like what you see that I was to become. I was actually a, a person that became rebellious. I even ate meat at one time in my life. I, I smoked and I did many things that I am now sorry that I did. But as I am over here, I understand that it was part of my life plan to learn how people speak and how they act, and I could associate with that. Okay, why did you become a vegetarian at an early age? I always loved animals. My religion was very special towards animals. They thought that each animal had a soul and would return, and I felt that I could never alter the life of an animal that was so precious. I felt that it was far better to eat vegetables and to try to live a life of moderation so that the animals would not have their life plans or altered by anything that I would do. It was a very important decision in my life and I stuck to it. Okay, what influence did your mother have on you? My mother was a very loving and religious person. She introduced me to all the aspects of our Hindu faith. She tried to follow the rules of the ancients and she had a very profound effect upon me. After my time of rebellion, I relied on her teachings. I felt that she was a wonderful influence for me. Was there ever a time that you did not believe in any God? There was a time during my period of rebellion that I figured that being happy and enjoying things was much more important than trying to follow the teachings of any deity. I did have doubts. I associated with people that had doubts. And I am sorry to say that there was a period of time that I did not believe that there was an ulterior power in the universe which controlled all things. I'm very sorry for that, but once again, I feel that it was a very important part of my learning as I walked the earth. Okay, we get some questions coming up in our cat chat room again. Uh, one of our listeners would like to know what level you are in heaven. I am on seventh level. That is why I, am to been, I can be chosen by God so closely to come to do major things. We do not always succeed in what we try to do. But those of us that are a member of the, God, of, of the soul family of God are all members of the upper level. Yes. And another listener would like to know if you had psychic abilities back in those days. I did have some psychic abilities. I would hear voices in my dreams, and I did a lot of meditation. As I would meditate, I would see figures, and I would receive messages. Quite often, my life was very difficult, and it was those messages that would keep me going. There were times that I would fast for maybe a week at a time, and that would, tear, that would destroy my strength. And I would wonder whether it was really creating any good or the, whether I was just simply wasting my time. 
I would receive messages in those times of distress. Perhaps I would get more when I, my body was weakened. But I would try to listen to now that I understand who was speaking to me, my guides. I would try to do what they would ask of me because I felt that it was what was right. Okay, could you tell us about the caste system that was in India at the time of your birth? People were determined at birth what they could accomplish. For instance, the untouchables knew that they would always be poor and would not be able to advance. The people in the upper caste would be allowed to communicate and go to schools, and they were re highly respected by the people from Britain that were in, in control. The British would never pay attention to the lower systems. That was one reason why I thought it was so important that the Indian people would try to gain freedom from the British and would be allowed to govern themselves. That was the only way that the people in the lower castes would ever be allowed to advance. Okay, you were born Hindu. Uh, could you explain the concepts of the Hindu religion for everybody, please? The Hindu religion was a very early religion. It was before, it was formed when Christianity did not exist. There were many different facets of, and there are currently many different facets of the Hindu religion. It is basically a religion based on kindness and on helping others. We believe that the soul journey will be altered through reincarnation, that the souls of both humans and animals will return, and that they will learn lessons in each different lifetime. Hindu religion is very complex but it is a good religion. As you know from the messages that you are receiving that there are many paths to heaven and the Hindus have a very clear path. There are many now that speak of violence in our faith and that is not a good thing. I fear that there will never be a time that you could have a community of nonviolence because there are always individuals that will take advantage of those who are considered weak. When you see the advanced cultures in the other planets, you will understand that nonviolence is the key to their success. Nonviolence is a long lesson a lesson from the past that has been learned by many cultures. Cultures either learn that lesson or they do cease to exist. Okay. Um, we have a question that as a Hindu, who did you pray to? I was a member of the... I can't pronounce. The... I'm sorry. I'm having trouble with that one. My set was very oriented towards ancient faiths and we were family oriented as well. It was a very good faith and I would still recommend it. Okay, uh, why did you decide to, decide to study law? I would have rather been a doctor because I wanted to help people my family felt that if I was a lawyer, I would be able to accomplish greater things working with the masters that were sent from Great Britain. So I went to Great Britain and I did become a barrister. And I do not think that I was very good at it. Actually, I know that I was not very good at it. 
There were things about being a lawyer that I just did not like. I hated to take depositions or to t interrogate people on the other side. I was very happy when the opportunity came for me to go to South Africa. And is that what sent you to South Africa, getting out of that business? Well, I was still going to be in that business, but I was going to be dealing with people of skin color similar to mine, and I thought that South Africa would be a better place to practice law. And I would be removed from all of the parts of the legal profession that were so strict in Great Britain. Okay, could you describe your life in South Africa? When I got to South Africa, I found out that the people in control had deep hatred for anyone with skin color such as mine. I was treated very badly. I was actually thrown off of trains and I was treated with very little respect. I tried to work with the people of color in South Africa and I tried to make their lives better. Okay, with all that going on, why did you remain in South Africa? Your good heart? <laughs> I was prepared to leave, but when I was ready to go, I found that once again, the British had changed the laws and they were going to terribly affect what was, hap was going to happen to the people of color. I felt that I could be of service in trying to gain more, shall we say, respect, and that if I stayed in, Eng in South Africa, I could do much more than if I returned to my people in India or even to, or even back to Great Britain. It was a desire to help the people of South Africa that made me remain there. Okay, so when the Boer War began in 1899, you took sides with, you were backing the British in that war after the way they treated you because of your skin. Why, why did you do that? At that time of my life, I felt that I was a true British citizen and that it was my responsibility to try to help the people and the great, and the great country of Great Britain. At that time, I felt that it was a responsibility Although I did not take an active role in fighting or in violence, I did try to help. Okay, and how did you help? What did you do? I tried to use the Indian people that were present in South Africa to set up a ambulance system and to try to work with and cure and help the people that the soldiers that were wounded in the war. The Boers were really not bad people and I suppose that I should have possibly backed them. But at that time in my life, I felt that it was my responsibility as a British citizen to do as much as I could do I tried in my best to bring the Indian citizens to assist in a non-violent manner in the war, and I think that I was quite successful. Okay, let's take a little bit of a break here. Um, we'll be back within a couple minutes. We have a lot more to talk to Mr. Gandhi about. So. We will be right back. Don't go away. Channeling History will return right after these brief messages. In order for the light to shine so brightly, the darkness must be present. Tune in every Monday at 10 o'clock. The Dark Sun Rising on the Para-X Radio Network. From 
Haunted Road Media comes an exciting new novel by author Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Two lost souls ripped apart by murder in another century find each other again in the present only to discover that the murderer has followed them through time. Can their love save them or will history repeat itself? Find out in this captivating new novel by Marla Brooks, Soul Connection, A Deadly Obsession. Available now on Amazon.com and at BarnesandNoble.com. You've no doubt heard of Tango and Cash, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Perhaps it takes two to tango. Well, now, on the first and third Thursdays of each month, there's a show called Tango and Friends at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network with your host, Bruce Tango. And yes, there will be at least two to tango on each episode, sometimes even more. There's going to be lots of topics and lots of guests you'll all know and lots of surprises. Prizes. Tango and Friends, every first and third Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Have you ever wondered what Jesus and his followers would say if you could receive their messages today? In his new book, Spirit Speak, Channeling Jesus and the Holy Spirits, channeler and author Barry Strom answers those questions for you. Using his gift of spirit communication, he brings you messages from such holy spirits as Moses, John the Baptist, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Jesus, and even Mother Teresa and the Reverend Billy Graham. They discuss topics that are important for contemporary life in these troubled times. Spirits Speak, Channeling Jesus and the Holy Spirits is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other booksellers. Signed copies are available on the author's website, spiritspredict.com. After reading this book, you will never again say, what would Jesus say or do? Welcome back to Channeling History. Now, here are your hosts, Barry and Connie Strom. Okay, everybody, welcome back. And Connie, I think we have a bunch more questions, so let's get on with it. We definitely do. Uh, take a chat question from the chat room before I get back to our questions. Uh, COVID is hitting India very hard right now. What advice would you give to your country? You are correct. COVID is very dangerous and is wreaking havoc in my country at this time. I would suggest that they work very hard at getting as many of the different vaccines as possible. I think that if, if they would work with the United Nations and with your country, that there could be a lot of lot more vaccines available to them. I do believe that there is a thought that perhaps if the vaccines are not given to India, that it will help control the population. I would point out that this was a very, very terrible way to think. And I would say that that is not the way that God-fearing people should act. I agree with you on that. Okay, uh, during World War I, you encouraged the enlistment and support of the Indian troops to fight the war. This is contrasted with your nonviolent beliefs. Can you explain this, please? There were several reasons why I thought that Indian troops should fight in the war. For one thing, at this time in my life, I was trying to think ahead to the possibility of an independent country. And even though nonviolence is always good, there are times that any country has got to defend itself. The only way that my people could learn to handle the weapons to defend themselves was to be trained by the British government at that time. I also was still a firm believer that the British should give up control of India, and I felt that if we cooperated and supplied troops to fight in the war, that after the war was over, things would be much better for the Indian people. Sadly, I was not correct. Okay, at the beginning of World War II, 
You wrote that you did not believe that Hitler was the monster his opponents described. Why did you write that? I was trying to act as an intermediary at that time, and I totally did not understand the cruelty and terrible things that he was doing. Many things that he was doing was kept, to, was kept from us in the press. The Nazis were very good at hiding what they, were, what they were accomplishing, especially in the annihilation of the Jewish population. Had I truly understood that, I would have never written such a thing. I was trying to act as an intermediary because I still thought that nonviolence might be the answer to stop another worldwide conflict. I am sad to say that that was one of the things that I was, that I made the most terrible mistake of my life in. So did you believe that the Jews should not have resisted the Nazis? I did write that I, I thought that they would, that they should have not resisted. And sadly, that was also a mistake on my part. I understand now that people must resist evil when they see it. If they do not, there are people that are so evil that they will overthrow everything that they are trying, that the people are trying to do. Hitler had, Hitler had absolutely no conscience, and he's not paying for it. But it was terrible what he did. In the beginning, I had no idea what was taking place. Okay, what was your opinion about creating the nation of Israel? I had mixed emotions about that. I knew that the land that Israel was to be taken and put upon was land that the Palestinians were living. But it was the land that both Israel and Palestinians had been living on for thousands of years. I had hoped that they would be able to cooperate and that they would be able to live together in peace and harmony. They shared the belief of the Holy, of the Holy Land. They, there were many reasons why they could live together, but sadly, they have found many reasons to hate. You and Winston Churchill were not exactly the best of friends. What's your current opinion of him? And do you see him on the other side? Winston Churchill was absolutely not my friend in life. He had me put in prison because he thought that I was a threat. I was saying that the British should leave India. I had hoped that if they got out, India would be secure from invasion by the Japanese. Churchill thought that that was subversive and that I was a danger to the British war effort, and he acted accordingly. I obviously did not appreciate being put in jail again, and he had very strong opinions of hatred towards me. I do see him now that I am on the other side occasionally, but we avoid each other. Well. There is no evil or true hatred over here. There is still dislike. And our souls were very different in that, and when we walked the earth together. So I would say that my opinion has not greatly changed, although I must say I do not hate him. Okay. Uh, one of our listeners has the question. She would like you to comment on the uh, nuclear biological and chemical weapons proliferation going on today? I think that it is terrible. It is probably the worst thing that can happen for the evolution of humans. Throughout time, people have used the weapons that they have had. If these terrible weapons are utilized today, they are capable of wiping out human life on your planet. Well, God does give us free will. He certainly hopes that we use that free will for the betterment of individuals. Nonviolence is still the true answer. People must learn to love and people must learn to get along together. If that does not happen, then human evolution is in big danger. Yes, that's exactly what the Lord has told us many times. Uh, we have another question come into our chat room. 
Uh, what would you tell the people of the Gaza today to help them with their lives? I would tell the people of Gaza to look deeply at their leadership. There are many people that are leading them that only want to kill Jews. They want to destroy their neighbors and that is not going to happen. They will, they are feeling that if they create enough violence, the world will come in and will force Israel to adapt a more pacifist defense. There are many, many people in many countries that surround Israel that hate them and would like to see them disappear from the face of the earth. The Palestinians need to step back and they need to think about what is best for their future. They have now seen generations of violence and they have destroyed their ways of life. They will not be able to advance economically or socially until they learn to get along. They have very bad leadership. Hamas does not care what happens to the people. All they want to do is to destroy the Israeli country. As long as they follow people that only want destruction, then they too will suffer destruction. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us about the separation of India and Pakistan after World War II? And did you support that? The separation of Pakistan and India turned out to be a cancer. The Muslims were moved to Pakistan and the Hindu population from Pakistan was sent to India. It resulted in many riots and much violence and today they are still bitter enemies. I thought that separation would be a good thing and that the Hindus and the Muslims could learn to live together, maybe not love each other, but at least to live together. That has turned out to be a false dream, much like Palest the Palestinians and the Israelis. There are many, many areas of the world where hatred is so deep that I do not see any real answer. Why do the Hindus hate the Muslims? There has been a long history of hatred between Muslims and Hindus. The Muslims feel that their religion is the only way and the Hindus feel very strongly about theirs as well. They each feel that there are groups where violence is permitted you know, in the name of their religions. As long as people kill each other in the name of religion, they can surely not be in any way, manner, or form thinking that they are following the teachings of God. I've had the same thought. What is your view of Islam? There are many wonderful people in Islam. There are many that are peace-loving, there are many that show love and there are many there are many people that are advancing in the realms of heaven through the Muslim religion. However, there is a faction of Islam that is very violent and that feel that they can kill whoever in the name of their religions. I'm very sorry that that group still exists but they do. The people, the ordinary people that are part of the Islam religion are wonderful people and the world should not blame them for what the minority has been doing. Okay, um, do you think that your work inspired that of Martin Luther King? I know that it did. Now that I'm on the other side, I see him and speak with him. He was also sent back to preach the, the policies of nonviolence. God has known for many years that it's only through nonviolence 
that people can truly advance in their evolution. It is very difficult to advance when there are weapons of mass destruction over their heads that you know could kill everyone. Bart is a wonderful soul, and I spend much time with him over here. We discuss what we could do if we returned, but sometimes we do not have any real answers. Okay. What would your message be to the Black Lives Matter and Antifa movements? From over here, we see that those movements are preaching that violence will bring out the ends that they are seeking. Many of your youth think that violence is a way to totally undermine and to change your society. I would remind them that all violence does is to bring more violence. When you show hatred, hatred is returned. And when hatred is returned, it is very difficult to accomplish what you would like to accomplish. I was successful because I could bring many people to offer messages without turning to violence. When the British used violence, the world would react to them. Today, when the mobs riot or use violence and the police return that violence, there is little sympathy for either side. Yes. I think they would be much more successful if they studied some of the methods that I used when I walked the earth. Okay, um, maybe you give us a quick answer to a question from our chat room. Uh, was your assassination part of your life plan, and why were you killed? My assassination was actually part of my life plan. I was killed by a radical leftist member of my religion, and he killed me because he thought that I was starting to show too much favoritism to the Muslims. When I was murdered, the people reacted, and the reaction was very favorable towards many of the things that I wanted. I was 78 at the time, and my life was totally ending in the near future under ordinary circumstances. But yes, the assassination was actually part of my life plan. And we actually improved a lot of our standings in how the people reacted to it. Okay, um, you were a student of world religions. Now that you're on the other side, what would you tell our listeners about the relationships of the world, world religions to, and God? There are many paths to heaven. All of the religions that teach love and family rela good family relationships are living lives that will lead to successful paths to heaven. There are many religions that want you only to honor the church and that teach that only through the church can you gain access to heaven. Those religions are not correct. There are many individuals that do not practice any essential religion but live good lives and advance in heaven. God speaks to you of many paths, and many paths do exist. The paths exist because of the way that you live your life. Love begets love, hate begets hate. It is almost that simple. You follow those words, and you will be well on one of the many paths. There is no one religion that controls the pathway to heaven. This all sounds very familiar to me. I think you must know God pretty well. Um, 
You adopted a life of simplicity, fasting and austerity that was free of material items. Is that the type of lifestyle necessary to ascend to heaven? Or ascend in heaven, I should say. I was taught through my religions that that type of lifestyle would be the best way to ascend. I have found that it living with that type of lifestyle is not necessary. There are many, many good people that have wealth and are able to live lives where they help many others. I can tell you that you will not enter heaven with wealth. Today, it is very difficult to live austere lives. I would simply suggest that you focus on helping others and that in the end, your pathway will be secure. Okay, what country do you see as the greatest danger to human rights and evolution? There are several countries that are very dangerous at this time. I see Iran as wanting to destroy life in Israel. And I see China as an immense problem for the evolution of the world. They have billions of people and they have total control over their population. They have long-term goals that will help their country to become the strongest in the world. If that happens, there will be many dangers. I think that China is probably the biggest danger to human rights and human evolution. Okay, one of your quotes is, an eye for an eye only ends up making the whole world blind. Would you please tell us how that quote applies to our modern world? An eye, to, an eye for an eye now can be use of weapons of mass destruction against weapons of mass destruction. It is possible for things to get out of control. And with so many countries having these weapons today, the future of humans can be very dangerous to think about. Yeah, what is your view on socialism? Socialism is a very dangerous type of political system. Countries that have tried socialism have destroyed the lives of millions of people. There are always people that try to take advantage of wealth and to try to build power. And it is very easy under a socialist, a socialist system for a leader to take advantage of the people. Okay, what is your opinion on the equality of women? When I lived, I did not feel that women were, were the equivalent of men. Now that I'm under, on the other side, you can trust me when I tell you that all men and women and souls are equal. Think about the fact that a soul can reincarnate as a woman in one lifetime and a man in another. That does not mean that that soul has got any lesser ability in that lifetime as a woman. I am sorry for my opinions of when I lived, but that was the way people were in my day. Mm -hmm. At that time, what was your opinion of Christianity? Christianity is but a single path to heaven. There are other religions that can assure the path to heaven just as easily as Christianity. Christianity has suffered from the church dictating what philosophies and words have been available to the people through the ages. Christianity was intended to be the true teachings of Jesus. Those words have been changed and altered through the years. And that is why it is important that the truth of Jesus' words are brought to the future. Yeah. Okay, do you have a final message for us? Yes. 
I would like to thank you for having me here tonight. I have said things as I feel them. I have understood that many of the things that I talked when I walked the earth would not work in today's modern society. A true nonviolent society, as God would like, will never last until all of the countries learn that love and peace are the only ways that they can truly advance. Today, I have tried to bring you advice as I did when I tried to walk the earth. Many things have changed in the years since I, have, I was killed, but many things remain the same. There are still people seeking power, and there are still people seeking great wealth, and there are people that are still keeping other individuals from advancing. I would hope that a great equality comes over the world. I would hope that they follow the true words of God and try to spread the words of love. That is the only way that individuals can truly advance and that humans can evolve and take their place with the other great civilizations in the galaxy. So with these words, I'm going to say goodbye. I thank you for listening. I hope that I have not offended anyone, and I hope that my words have helped. So good night, and thank you for having me. Thank you. God bless you. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it, and I was very surprised uh, with the terminology and words I was using. Okay, next week we're going to be channeling the spirit of Reverend Billy Graham, and the week after that we are going to be doing King Richard III. I can assure you that this show with Reverend Graham is going to be very interesting. You can submit questions and suggestions for future guests through our email, channelinghistoryonparax at gmail.com. My books are all available on Amazon. You can get signed copies on my website, spiritspredict.com, and some of them are even available on Kindle. All of our shows are available for free on our YouTube channel, and it's in my name, Barry Strong. If you want to download them, you will have to go to Podomatic and search Channeling History, and once again, there everything is available on those sites. We hope that you enjoyed our show tonight. Thank you for listening. And please join us Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Para-X Radio Network. Thank you all for listening and joining us this evening. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening to Channeling History. Tune in again next week for another electrifying episode as we never know who will make an appearance or who will come through the portal. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2020. Our story begins by Kevin McLeod, licensed through Incompetech.com.